What's up guys, here's the latest from me, from the gyms and what you should be thinking about in regards to your fitness goals at this point in time, amidst all this uncertainty. First off, business as usual. Times are crazy, but that doesn't mean you can't keep on a pathway towards your goals. Gyms are open, the most of them. In this time, it's gonna be the independently run gyms that can make their own decisions, be quick and act nimble, that are gonna be staying more open. Gonna to wanna to be avoiding classes and class type gyms. If you're up in central London, you're seeing places like Barry's Boot Camp and Rebel One close. As far as City Athletics concerned, we're a small gym, low membership, and we've implemented good hygiene procedures. We're going to be staying open until we're instructed by the government otherwise. I'm still training clients and coaches will still be training clients. You know, even if you're working from home, you can commute in for your PT sessions and I'm adaptable. I'm sure many other coaches are going to be adaptable. Speak to them, tell them your concerns and we'll all work together to find the best goals for you. Now, if you are working from home, which is what's happened to many people this week, they've been asked to work from home, then here's some of your considerations for working from home. Watch your NEAT. So NEAT stands for Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenesis. This is basically how much you move around in the day. This is your commute to work. This is you know, going to the water cooler in the office. This is you know, whether you go out for a walk. This is everything that's not specifically gym, cycling, running, not specific exercise. Now, the biggest difference you're gonna see right now if you're moving to working from home is a huge drop in your NEAT. There's an example up here, I'm gonna go by step count. So working from home could be 3,000 steps in a day. An office day where you commute in, you walk around the office a bit, could be 12,000. To put this into perspective, a 60 minute run at a good average pace, eight kilometers on a treadmill, could be 8,000 steps. You could be looking in terms of difference of your daily activity just by not going into the office, the difference of a 60 minute run. Now, first step is to be aware of this difference. If you've got a Fitbit or an iWatch, you can go into those apps and you can look at your steps. You can look back at what a step count was for an office day, or take a weekly average of a month to fry office week and see what your weekly average daily step count is. And then just have a look at your daily step count for a working from home day and see what the difference is. That's the first step. Once you know the difference, you can then work towards filling that gap. Now, if you don't fill that gap, you're gonna put on a lot of weight very quickly, especially if you're eating exactly the same thing. Now, your options are to fill that gap or bring calories down. On the whole, it's gonna be a lot more healthy and allow you to keep in routine if you just fill that gap with extra activity. Now, this could be walking, going for walks, going for runs, or you could just continue your commute to work to use the gym by work which is what a lot of people are doing at City Athletic, City Workers. Dropping calories should be more so a last resort. What I would say is figure out that, that gap, try and fill that step gap so you're maintaining activity while working from home, monitor your weight, and if weight's still creeping up or you're struggling to fill that gap, then you can look at reducing calories. Stay mobile. Now this is quite an obvious one, but being sedentary, can cause massive problems, you know, hunched over back, glutes atrophy, you know, hamstrings tightening, tight hip flexors, stiff neck, shoulders pulled in, caved in, joint problems. You know, if you've got any underlying injuries, those could be from, you know, old stuff, stuff you've had a surgery on, stuff that you constantly manage. And if it's feeling okay now and you're managing it, could easily go from okay to causing you a big problem in just a week of being sedentary. 
when you exercise, you know, you put blood flow to the areas, the muscles that might, you know, be struggling from the old injury. When you move your joint, your body releases fluids that lubricate the joint. All of that stops happening. All these mechanisms that are protecting and supporting this old injury start to decline. And that's how it becomes a big problem very quickly. So working from home, if you do this first point and you keep your knee up, then you shouldn't have this problem. But for the sake of awareness, when you're working from home, just be aware of how you're sitting, be aware of how you're moving. And if you're not keeping your knee up while at home, then I would advise just stretching daily and doing a few movements, you know, in lots of different movement pathways just to keep muscles active. All right, your training. Don't jump to anything. Now, lots of people are jumping to, you know, home workouts, to shall I change my calories, bring my calories down. My advice would be don't jump to anything. I mean, jumping to home workouts is like panic buying toilet roll at the supermarket. Um, you know, you're preempting something that hasn't necessarily happened yet. Gyms in the UK are still open or lots of them. So there's no reason why you can't gym. Now, taking on a new home workout plan, different style, especially, well, this is, this is if you don't have an already extensive home gym and you're gonna to have to use body weight and minimal equipment. Taking on a new home workout plan, that's, um, that's a lot of learning. It's a new learning phase. It's gonna take you a while to figure out the exercises that work for you. It's then gonna be a couple of weeks before you figure out what's your max reps, what's your max weight, so that's A, a lot of learning, B, that's a period without much progressive overload because you're having to figure out all your weights, all your reps, things again. And C, that is a lot of effort for something that could change very quickly. Gyms haven't even been closed yet. When they do, then think about that, okay? Your gym setup. So you might be doing some working from home or your gym might have closed, unfortunately. Now, this is gonna be a time where you might have to alter your gym setup. So you can continue to commute into your gym by work, which is what I would recommend. That's gonna be the pathway of least change. You're gonna keep up all your knee by keeping a similar commute. You're gonna be in the same gym where you know the resistance on machines. You can continue with progressive overload. Um, there's nothing to think about, you can just crack on as normal. Sure, it seems a bit stupid commuting in for the gym, but you know, you'll be doing it anyway if you weren't working from home. This isn't a holiday. You want to be able to get back to your routine as quickly as possible when this all finishes. So why alter that routine in the first place? Just keep it going. Um, but if you've got a long, long commute, an expensive commute, especially considering you might have financial troubles right now, then commuting may not be the best thing. In that case, you might wanna take out a second membership at a local gym and maybe travel in here and there to see your PT, if you've got a PT, but take out that local gym membership as well, just so that you can keep up your training plan. Your goal. So everything we just spoke about, keeping up your knee, working from home considerations, you know, your training setup, that's all very well, but what if the motivation is no longer there? You might have had a holiday plan cancelled. You might have found the perfect setup or flow with your commute, your PT, your timeline, your day, and that's now been completely disrupted. So what if motivation's no longer there? Well, what I'd like to challenge you and everyone to approach this in a certain way is go from thinking, ah, this is gonna be long and tough now that you know, I don't have a goal or a date to aim towards, and instead take it as an opportunity. I have been presented with an opportunity to challenge myself. If I can stay on track with my fitness goals, despite all this uncertainty, then I'll be able to achieve anything both inside and outside of the gym. Now you can use keeping on track with your fitness goals as a source of strength in these times. You're gonna need strength in lots of areas. Strength with your family, strength with your work, strength with your fitness, and 
Being strong as a whole across everything is going to help you to be stronger across all of them. Commit to keeping on track with your fitness goals and that strength will help you be strong across the board in all the areas we're going to be struggling with at the moment. Now, you also have to think that this will end and when it does, you've got a couple choices. Now, when this ends in maybe three months, let's say three months plus, it could be very well that the holiday you had cancelled, the airline changes their stance, the holiday is now back on. You know, in three months time, if you keep on track with your fitness goals, you could be back doing the plans that you were getting in shape for, in the shape you wanted to be, with the body you wanted, like none of this has ever happened. Or, you could not keep on track with your fitness goals, your mobility, your knee, you can let it drop off, and A, you could have not progressed at all, B, you could have you know, declined and now have some problems in your mobility or health that you now need to recover, and you could be looking at 2021 for you know, that goal, which was supposed to be this year. You know, everything's uncertain at the moment, but if you keep on track, then at least you know in your head that when things get better, you're going to be ready and you can pick up right where you left off. So coaching and PT, obviously I'm a personal trainer and I'm an online coach. This is my advice, but ultimately it's your choice. I've said what I feel would be the best way right now with situation with UK gyms, with government advice, to keep on track with your fitness goals. It's up to you to take that information and your own personal circumstances and opinion on the virus and decide what's best for you. Now, whatever you decide, I will accommodate. There's lots of things that I can help with in this period of time. Training plan adjustments, you know, you might be moving gyms, you might need a new training plan for that gym, you may need a combo training plan, home training plan. If gyms do shut, you might need a home training plan. You may need help calculating your knee. Everything I said on the step count and other things might be confusing to you. You might not know the best way forward to get your step count back up to where it was. Maybe you can't get your step out and you need diet changes, you need diet advice. I can help with that. I can help you refine your calories down so that you A, stay healthy, B, keep your immune system high, and C, don't put on any weight during this period. Daily stretches, mobility, what old injuries do you have? What do you need to keep on top of? What's tight? How are you sitting in the day? How is working from home affecting you? I can help you with your daily stretches. Encouragement, motivation, you know, we're all struggling now. Having a helping hand, somebody to talk to, is gonna be great. I've got WhatsApp support, online coaching. I can do Skype PT, and I have a lot of clients right now that are moving to Skype PT. You, know, you can explore that even with your own coach. And home visits too. You know, we're all self-isolating here. I'm healthy, I'm not catching it, I'm sanitizing right now, you know, touch wood. Um, so home visits is an option too, okay? Now, these times are gonna finish. We're all gonna be in it. We're all gonna be stronger together. But remember, despite everything, the game train never stops, okay? Keep lifting, stay healthy, stay safe, and let's keep on track to our goals together.